Yo, what's up, everybody? Hope everybody's having a good day. Boy, Eyes and Ears Tactical. Go ahead and hit the like button real quick. Help the boy out. Man, I got a couple things I'm going to go over here. A uh, couple things is going to be safety and uh, just being aware of what's going on with your firearm because I discovered a few things. I was out shooting. I didn't put a video up. I'm starting. To, I'm going to be doing some shooting, but I ain't going to be putting up videos all the time because I'm trying to really master, get my uh, shot placement down. And I noticed that I'm, you know, my breathing's off and my uh, finger, too much finger in the trigger because I'm looking at my shots on video and looking at them when they land on paper on impact. And, I, you know, I talked to a few guys on the side and that are, you know, first of all, I'm not a professional shooter. But I'm a very good home defense shooter. So if anybody wondering, yeah, I'm good. I'm good in that department. I'm, I'm good. I'm very good at home defense range. Super good. But I'm trying to get more precision because, hey, 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 get down from there. I got a new a new puppy, by the way. This dog's crazy. Come here. I don't know if y'all can see her. her. Name is Chloe. My wife bought this puppy. Say hi. Hey, look. Look up. And she don't want to be seen. But. My wife bought this puppy for uh, the New Year's. But I don't know. She's kind of fearless. She doesn't understand. You can't just, hey, look, say hi to everybody. She, she doesn't realize she can't just jump off of stuff. I'm trying to get her to look up. But yeah, she, uh, she's a good puppy. Her name is Chloe. But yeah, this dog is crazy. She tried to jump off of stuff and everything. I don't think she realizes she, she'll get hurt if she does that. But yeah, man, let me get back to what I was doing. So, man, uh, yeah, man, uh, you, you got to be aware of what you're doing. Okay, get down. I knew this was going to be hard. It's my first video with the puppy. <laughs> but yeah, you got to be aware of what uh, what's going on around. So I was in there shooting and I was noticing that, you know, like I said, I was looking at, the, you know, my finger and the trigger and. There's a lot of fundamentals that was off and, you know, dry fire is good for sure. But sometimes it just, you know, sometimes it's just, man, you got to just still shoot though. So that's what I was picking up on, man. That's one of you guys know. And YouTube, I'm in a safe control environment. All these weapons are clear. Um, there's nothing in here. There's no mags up in here. And the other thing you want to safe direction, which you want to be aware of is uh, when you got all these attachments and things, mag wells, lights, and sights, and optics, and stuff like that, all attached to, and that's why a lot of people don't like lights and stuff all on their EDC, because there's less things to fall off and then give you a problem. You need to check these things. So when I was, after I got done shot, I went and checked my light, make sure it was, you know, I'm not flagging myself, make sure it was tight, it was, but the optic got loose, because when I put the optic on, I don't know if y'all can see this. I don't know if you can see that. And um, it's loose anyway, but when I originally put it on, I didn't really have a torque screwdriver, which is amazing because I have a lot of precision tooling when I used to be a wind turbine technician. I'll show you guys some videos and pictures one day on my community page. I was I was a crazy son of a gun back then, climbing up 60 meters in the sky. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, uh, yeah, I had a lot of precision tooling, but... I can't believe I didn't have one, so I got to order one of those and uh, get this thing torqued down to 15 foot pounds. That's what the spec's supposed to be. Um, so I noticed that um, this, this is you know, home defense. This weapon actually is loaded, but nothing, nothing's in the uh, chamber. Completely clear firearm. Um, so that's what I noticed was that that was loose, you know. And I was putting too much finger inside the trigger. And these are all just basically fundamentals, things that you need to practice on and uh, get better with. Now, the other thing I was going to show y'all. Oh, sleeps, man. This just that holster I was telling you about. Sleeps, sleep so BK5. These are uh, the micro compact that Glock makes for uh, all their small ones, like 26, 26, 27, 29, 30. And they make all these holsters for them, the strong ass Kydex with that. A clip right there so they fit snug as a bug optic ready you know what i'm saying but yeah 30 bucks still one of my best holsters for that pistol uh what i want to show you somebody asked me like how do you this is ksg is starting to get a lot of conversation uh not mine but just in general 
I guess because now people are starting to pick up on the fact that these tactical shotguns are now <clears throat> proven to be kind of loyal and the capacity. I think that's why people are starting to go toward them. I still say a traditional pump shotgun for a new home defense owner is better because it's less moving parts and simple. But once you get used to used to these uh, tactical um, bullpup shotguns, they're they're excellent, man. But I was going to show everybody uh, how to unload this because somebody was people were asking, like, how do you unload it? You know, because it's got that tube feeding system. So let's uh, I'm going to show you how to unload it. OK, so, man, I hope y'all can see this. So if you can look right here. There's your two tubes right there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unload this. I'm going to flip that safety selector to a certain side. And if you see, it's on this side right now. Right now. And I'm going to put, I'm going to take that side out. So it's a little clip. See those little metal clips right there? Like right there. They're kind of serrated. And that's how you release it because they're they're sitting on the shell. So you just really basically just push this down and the shell will pop out. See? And then you just keep going until they all empty. There we go. There's another one. And you just keep doing that until that that tube is empty. And we're gonna count just to make sure. And I'll show you another safety mechanism where you can, it'll show you if your tube is empty. Let's see. Okay, it's, it's saying it's empty, but I'm not gonna, and you see that red follower? That's the end of that tube, that's empty. But that's not good enough for me. I'll show you another trick I got to make sure I'm safe. Now I flip that selector to the other side. You see it's on the red follower side. So now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. See? Okay. That should be 14 at the end of the day when I get done. It shoots two out at a time. It'll actually shoot as many as you can, but it won't, because this back wall right here won't let it shoot more. If that, if that wasn't there, they would just all fly out just by holding that thing down. So let's see here. go i think that's the last one okay so now you see both red followers both are empty okay now look at the bolt carry group there's nothing back here this is the bolt carry group there's nothing in there we're feeling pretty good now the other thing that i don't know how many people know this about the ksg they don't have a chamber indicator but what they do have i should have showed you before i empty it you see these slots right here one two three well when you have rounds in there you will see the brass from the shell sticking right through those slots indicating that there's something inside that tube and that's the same on this side see those slots and you will see that brass or you might even see the red of the shell and that's another way to know if this thing is still loaded, still hot. Now, we, we can uh, do another safety check. We can put that on that, and then we can rack it. Now, how you rack it is, there's this lever right here. See that? And you have to depress that to get, that, get this a cycle. See that? So that's how that works. And clearly, nothing came into the uh, boat carrier group. So let's do that again real quick. Do it upside down. So, okay, so you see there's nothing, nothing in there. Kind of do this, it's a weird little setup, so. And so that's how you can tell There's nothing in there. Okay. So that's one of the things. And you have a standard. 
push safety fire and safe and this will not you can't fire this with the safety on you can't rack it but you can't fire it okay see so that's pretty much uh one of the safety features of the ksg and how you uh how you rack this thing and how you unload it and let's do a let's do a shell count just to make sure that this sucker was completely empty i know we were though but let's just do a shell count so each tube is seven so this should be easy math this is four buck so we got one two three what's that three four five six okay this is a very lethal shotgun great for home defense home defense you can cater what kind of shells you want to put in it uh, i won't be using slugs in my home defense setup but uh I, I got the mini slugs coming i'll be using some of them probably or the mini buck so we got one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven so that's 14 i didn't have one in the head so we safe we we know that this weapon is clear just by number count we visually checked it we did each two we use our indicators also mere fact that i already knew that there was 14 in there so i'm triple safe so this is the, the capacity of this thing man you got 14 of these and then you got one two three four five six seven on your little shell carrier i mean this is ridiculous dude this is a very very uh great setup um talking about capacity and lethality this this is this home defense range this is really really we get the job done uh one thing i want to show you guys also is um i was shooting this and and i looked up and if you see the muzzle brake see if i can get this now you see this this howitzer muzzle brake by uh high tech customs okay this thing is timed on with some of those little uh crush washers so it, it loosened up and i had this for a few years but it's i'm gonna show you it's uh it loosened up on me so i had to take this off now and then retime it let me see lefty loosey righty tight okay it's reversed so i found out it was loose because these supposed to be on top when i got done shooting it was kind of like that i was like damn what's up with that so this is a uh, by uh high tech customs made in usa uh, i think they got a new york city um this is the howitzer muzzle brake made after the howitzer tank muzzle uh this, this is a badass brake it knocks the reduction down the recoil down by like 60 70 percent with the pad on the back too so i just want to show you guys this so this is i've never cleaned this you see all the soot in there the carbon you can see on the tip there's your threads and there's the crush washers okay these are the tubes this is not the barrel these are the feeding tubes this is the barrel one barrel two tubes everyone kind of confuses this with the dp12 and that is a big difference from the dp12 the dp12 has two barrels so you get two shots out of each pull completely different much heavier too so i gotta uh, get some more crush washers because these evidently have crushed out <laughs> and the, the timing is off so i thought i had some extra ones somewhere i don't know how many i got up on here this is, you see i got a few of them so I, I i gotta figure that out but that's just something i want to point out and you can thread lock this but I, I don't i just basically put my crush washers on and then, like i said just check on it every now and then make sure make sure it's not backing out or getting loose on you because this thing does have a lot of impact a lot of recoil with this shotgun so it wouldn't be shocking for it to back out if you didn't lock tight it or you know really ramp it on there real tight and this is a clear weapon in case somebody just joined in like man he got his hand all on the muzzle uh well if you missed the first part of the video i just cleared it so that's what I wanted to bring up to you guys on that, on that KSC shotgun, man. Make sure you're checking that. If you've got a break on the end, if you don't, then you're good. But on any of your weapons, if you've got any attachments, you need to be double checking them after you shoot. 
Uh, this is a brass defect in case somebody was wondering, like, what is that there? I'm a lefty. And this is by uh, Primary Machining. Uh, keeps that brass from dropping down because these shells, they drop down, they'll drop down. You got to figure if you were shooting this, right? See where my arm is? So what happens is when I first bought this many years ago, they were dropping down right here and I had burn marks and shit. Now you can see where they're bouncing off and they go over my arm. See that? Now, the only thing you give up when you put that brass reflector on, you can't manipulate this toggle switch with your wrist. If that wasn't there, I could manipulate that with like this. So that's the only thing that the brass reflector, you give that up. But if you had a long sleeve shirt on gloves, you probably wouldn't care. So that's the brass deflector. I just want everybody to see that. And then this is the, uh, the reduction pad. So with a combination of this pad and this muzzle brakes, it's supposed to knock out 70% of the recoil. So, but with double R box, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to feel it regardless. But it's not as bad, though. So anyway, let me get on moving. This video is getting long. Uh, it's already long. Who cares? You guys can turn off if you want. But uh, I want to bring out one more thing. Well, I got a couple things, but this one is pretty interesting. So on, on these uh, pistol braces, uh, shout out to Desert Operator underscore 556. My oh, man, Chip. Uh, so with the, with the SBA tactical braces, when I was shooting it, I noticed that the, uh, let me go up underneath here. I noticed that the, uh, I noticed the brace wasn't as stiff as it could be like a buck, like a butt stock, you know? So I was like, man, so Chip said, Hey man, there's a, there's a company stiffy that, uh, it's called stiffy. And what they do is they got this little piece you put up in here and it makes this stiff. So it kind of, it kind of makes it feel like a, uh, like a buck stock, like a regular stock versus a brace. And so it goes inside of here and it's, it's a little part. And I ordered a couple of them for my braces, but it's called stiffy. So uh, check them out, S-T-I-F-F-Y, Stiffy, for S-B-A Tactical Braces. Okay, so I got that for you guys. Then, on another level, shout out to the, high, the, the Alert Zone TV, James out in Iowa. He was talking on one of his videos a while back about soft alarm systems in your house. Like if you can't afford, what is it called, uh, ring? If you can't afford all that stuff or ADT or, or, you know, stuff like that, she went to church. Uh, he said, have soft alarm systems, like, you know, window alarms, when they separate, they go off, this, that, and the other dog, uh, little bells and chimes and things of that nature. But one of the things I found that I'm going to put on one of my doors in my house, I'm gonna, it's mainly for video because it does both and it's a doorbell, but it can be used individually. So I found this blink, this doorbell system, and you just mount it on wherever you want. And it has a video too, and has motion detection. Um, so I'll put this back on a shed in my house. No one, it's no, it's on my property, so you won't never use the doorbell. But if someone goes to my backyard or something like that, or walk past it, this thing would alert me on my phone because you download the Blink app, and you can see people on this on your uh, video on this. So it's pretty neat. And this is very inexpensive. I'll let you guys do your research and study it and find how much it is. I don't do prices on my channel in case you guys notice. But yeah, the Blink doorbell system is a soft alert, soft alert system. Uh, it doesn't break the bank. And yeah, this could probably save your life in a, in a weird situation. And at the very least, you get video to see who's walking by your property or your house or whatever. If someone's snooping in your backyard or your driveway. So you can buy a couple of these and just have them all over the place, hanging them upside down and on the ceilings and stuff. Because you don't really need the doorbell part. You just want the video part. And that might be cheaper than ring. But, yeah, man, that's what I got for you guys, man. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, check your equipment. You know, any attachments on your firearms, make sure you're checking them out. Make sure they're not loosening up, backing up, and stuff like that. And make sure you are properly clearing your weapons when you're cleaning them or just doing anything with them, putting parts on them. So boy, eyes, mirrors, tasks, go like, comment, subscribe, everybody stay blessed. Peace.